For me, one of the best things about having a vegetable garden is having the food security that comes with it because I know at any one point, we've got at least two months worth of food. And that is a great sense of resilience. And it ties in nicely with self-sufficiency because self-sufficiency is the idea of being able to provide for yourself and not having to rely on external things or having to go out and buy things. But actually complete self-sufficiency is really tricky to achieve. So in this video, we're gonna bring it back and start at the very beginning to show you how you can start to become self-sufficient in vegetables. The first tip that I'll give is to set yourself really easy, achievable goals and targets. And the best way of doing this is to start with a simple challenge. And that simple challenge is to have a slow increments of time where you're being fully self-sufficient from the garden. So what I mean by this is if you're say having a meal and you're having a lasagna, then you'd want all of the vegetables for that lasagna to come from the garden for the side dishes. So a really easy way of doing this to start with is to set yourself a challenge of spending a whole weekend. So mainly that will be lunch and suppers for Saturday and Sunday using only produce that you've grown in the garden. And I've got leeks here and we will be having leeks for some soup and all sorts of things. But once you get a taster for that weekend, then extend it, try a week and then try a month and then a season and then eventually a year. But the tricky thing is, of course, our seasons. So it's always going to be easiest to do this from around July until October. But as you get better over time, you will start to eke it out. And we're in early March and most of the vegetables that we're eating at the moment are coming straight from the garden, just like these leeks. Now this video is a collaboration with Mark from Self Sufficient To Me, the YouTube channel based in Australia. And what we're doing is we've both got five tips, but our fifth tip can be found on the other channel. For example, Mark's fifth tip will be on this video and my fifth tip will be on Mark's video. And there'll be a link provided down below, but we'll come to that a bit later. Now on to my second tip. And my second tip, is to change your attitude and I don't mean it in a bad way at all but one of the most inspiring uh, people I think doing this when it comes to self-sufficiency that I've ever met is Liz Zorab from By The Farm. So the last time uh, we went to the supermarket to buy veg was about two and a half years ago um, and we have just, we've adapted what we eat so that we don't need to uh, go to supermarkets. So we're not eating the same food uh, that we did previously. But the, the feeling of not having to go and select vegetables that aren't necessarily as fresh as uh, from garden to plate in 10 minutes, uh, is a really nice feeling to be, to be independent of that system. And she has the most fantastic mindset when it comes to self-sufficiency, because I think we get so used to being able to have strawberries in January and you know tomatoes in February and leeks in June. But in reality, if you wanna become self-sufficient and you don't wanna spend half of your life preserving things, things like this aren't attainable. So the best and easiest workaround, I mean, in terms of in theory, is to just have an attitude change by adapting your diet to a seasonal diet and making use of what's available at any one time. So for example, right this moment, we've still got quite a few winter vegetables left. So we've got sweet, we've got parsnips, we've got beetroot as well and leeks. And a lot of our meal times revolve around these. But then when you get a bit bored, the great thing about gardening is that every single month and every single season, you get new crops constantly coming and going. So when you get a little bit bored of something then you'll have another new crop coming in to replace it so simply by adapting your diet to what's available seasonally suddenly self-sufficiency can seem a lot more achievable 
If I could only give one tip to improve your self-sufficiency and general all-round productivity of your garden, it would be this. And that's to actually relook at how you create your planting plan. And I did a video dedicated about this about how to create monthly planting plans and why they're far superior to annual planting plans because it allows you to see the change throughout the year and also means by seeing this change you have the opportunity to make the most of it by planning succession planting. So for example looking on my plan I'll know that end of June, early July, I'll be harvesting my first early potatoes and then that means I've got some space so what can I fill it with? And then it means perhaps in April or May, I can sow some kale or some leek seeds to then transplant as soon as the potatoes come out. Now, if you want to find out more about the method of a monthly planting plant and all of the benefits it brings, then check out the card that's appearing right this moment. And trust me, it is an absolute game changer. So my fourth tip is to start slowly looking at ways to better store and preserve your produce. And if you're a lazy gardener like me, one of my favorite things about growing food in winter is the fact that you can actually store it in the ground. So you don't have to take up valuable storage space in the house or in your shed or in your garage. You just simply leave them outside. However, the downside to this method is that it's not really going to work during summer, especially for things like fruiting vegetables like peas, because they will dry and go hard and you can't store them in the ground. So these leeks for perspective, we've been harvesting them since October throughout the garden and here we are in almost mid-March and we've still got lots left and we're going to have to obviously preserve these before they go to seed. But that long gap between October and March of just keeping it stored in the ground is one of the reasons why I love growing winter vegetables in a cooler climate like this. But when it comes to your spring and summer vegetables, what you need to do is to start looking at traditional ways of storing them, such as how to dry things out properly, how to begin storing things in say sand for root vegetables there's so many different ways and it's really hard to recommend the best because different people prefer different methods so if you want to find out a bit more about how to start storing and preserving your gluts especially then I've got a load of links down below in the video description for you to start getting a sense of what's possible. G'day I'm Hugh but 30 years in the future and boy have I aged terribly and I've got an Australian accent. What's going on? <laughs> Only joking. I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and Hugh kindly invited me onto his channel to give you tip number five, which is use your vegetables to make more vegetables. Just like this heirloom corn here, I can use the seed from this to grow hundreds more plants. One of the mistakes new food gardeners make is wasting money on buying a heap of seed or plants only for these crops to fail as they learn on the go, or should I say grow, learn on the grow. Why not experiment first if you're really new to gardening and grow things that you already have purchased from the supermarket? just as a trial to get things rolling. Most common vegetables will regrow from offcuts such as the base of lettuce, carrots, celery, fennel, leeks and spring onion. Yes, it's true that offcuts from the markets and kitchen scraps will grow back to a stage where you can begin harvesting them again. But it's kind of a bit misleading because the fact is most of the time they will not grow back as vigorous as the original plant. A good example comparison is spring onion bases can sprout growing well enough to use again and again as a garnish, whereas a carrot base won't necessarily grow into another nice big long carrot. However, if you leave the carrot grow on, you can harvest the tops, just like parsley. The leaves are totally edible and very nice too. And then you can leave that grow out, go to seed, they turn brown, use the seeds back in the garden that following season to grow the full crop with the root. And that's what I'm talking about. 
The same thing for lettuce. You might be able to harvest baby lettuce leaves for a short period, growing from the off-cut base of a store-bought lettuce, but the real benefit is collecting the seeds and then potentially growing hundreds more new lettuce plants, all practically for free from supermarket vegetable offcuts. And that's not all. Who has had potatoes go green or sprout in the pantry? Don't throw them away. They can't be eaten, but they can be planted back out into the garden. And whilst certified seed potatoes are the better way to grow potatoes, growing store-bought potatoes in the home garden is a good free way to grow more vegetables from vegetables and learn about gardening at the same time. Thank you very much, Mark, for your fifth tip. And don't forget to check out my fifth tip on Mark's video. And the link will be down below in the description. And if you haven't checked out Mark's awesome channel, then you absolutely should, because it's full of amazing ideas. And honestly, as soon as you get onto the channel, I can assure you, you're gonna spend a long night binge watching all of his really informative videos. So good luck with your steps to begin becoming self-sufficient in vegetables. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon in the garden and showing you more of the growing side, which is all beginning to happen now. And I'm very excited. So see you again soon, goodbye.